border between Herefordshire and Walesshire. Uh, I just picked this one up. This is a uh, 850 T5 automatic. Can you hear me okay? Um, beautiful evening, so I just thought I'd go live, show people the car, have a little chat, because I haven't done any lives for a couple of days, see how you all are. There's some lovely fields, nice views, I'm enjoying my run home. Can't be too long, because apparently the wife's ordered pizza. Um, but here we are, this is um, Wales. Well, it's not really, it's Herefordshire Shire. There's a train going past over there. Just missed that one, so it's, it's quite scenic. There's the train, there she goes, you can just see the train in the background. Um, little orange BMW just going past. So, I'm going to jump in the car and chat some rubbish. And you can see the car look. If I spin the camera around, I'll show you. Oh yeah, very scenic here tonight. It's a bit windy. It's been very strange weather today, very windy. Um, we've got a little bit of rust on this front arch. We've got a few sort of parking marks, but they all rust there. A few marks there. I've got a set of alloys that can go on this. I've got a refurbished set. Uh, a bit of lack appeal. Uh, Bodywork generally is okay though. It's clean. It is a full fat T5. It's a proper turbo. It's got all the acceleration. Trust me, this car is fast. Um, the T5 badge has been removed because the gentleman I had it from, who you'll see on the fantastic video that we did together because he was lovely. You'll see that later on. He removed the T5 badge because his car's get, getting nicked from outside his house. So he thought if I hide the identity, I'll give us go for the 850 with a 940 and 960 are far superior because the 850s are cheaper. Uh, just, I don't know, I just love the 850. Bit of lack of peel here. Um, Retire. So, yeah, this is, this is my 850 2.3 T5 Turbo. Uh, it's done 240,000 miles. Right, we'll jump in the car and do some chatting. Oh, we're going a bit fast there, son. Right. So, inside, oh yes, it's the Czech plush. We've got heated seats. And what I love about these 850s is, um, look at the dials. For It needs a bit of a clean. It's a little bit grubby inside. Look at the dials for the mirrors. They're just fantastic. I love that they put two different stalks for the mirrors left and right. Economy and sport mode, winter mode as well. Heated seats. Uh, say this one's an automatic standard Volvo stereo bass treble fader if I want to put the audio in the back I just do that nice and easy no touch screens nothing to it um, my heating it doesn't have air con but what's the point of that in England anyway um, how fast I want the air how hot I want the air and where I want the air it really is that simple and if I don't want any air I can just roll these around um, that's my rubbish magnetic camera mount. Don't recommend. One star. 240,660 miles. And all seems to be in pretty good order. I have a sunroof, which is nice, obviously. Uh, headlining has clearly been falling down because it's been pinned at the back. But generally, that's a pretty nice car. Um, I bought two of these. I bought two, yes I bought two yesterday. I bought this one. And then Tony Goodman's gone to fetch another one for me. This is a busy little road. I thought this was a quiet little road. Right. Hello, everybody. How are we doing? Where's the magnet? Sunroof. What is sun? It's a very, very good question there. Bib the boulder. Um, how are we doing? That was my Volvo 850. I am halfway between Wales and Herefordshire Shire on my way home. And I thought I'd stop to do a little video for you. So today I jumped on a train to Treforest in Wales. And I went to see John, who was selling this car. Just the nicest guy. Invited me in his house, met his wife. They were doing a bit of gardening. He showed me his Fiat Panda 100 horsepower. He showed me his Cinquecento Sporting, and then I went away with the car. And he even called his wife and said, dear, do you want to come and wave the car off? Because, you know, they'd been quite fond of this car. But because he lives in Wales, 20 mile an hour speed limits, and his local dual carriageway has now gone down to 50, what's the point in having a car that can do 150 miles an hour? I'm not sure if it can do 150 miles an hour. Um, it can definitely get somewhere up, not close to that, but it's, it's quick enough. What we've got is, um, I do have a few lights on the dash which are concerning me. I've got a transmission light, although the gearbox seems to be functioning absolutely correctly. I do have a transmission light, and I've got a Lambda light. But a Lambda light isn't really unheard of with these older Volvos, the 850s. They do tend to, um, 
No, no, this, this one would do 150 mile an hour. This is this, this is the 220 horsepower uh, turbo. Um, yeah, and I didn't push it up to 150, but we did all right. Um, so, yeah, this is my Volvo, and it is available in this evening's Jeffel. If you're not familiar with that, then where can I put the link? Uh, how I, I don't know how I can add a link to this or even do that. But basically, if you go on the Jeff Buys, the best place to find it is maybe on my Instagram and click my story and you can find the link there. Or go on the Facebook, the Jeff Buys Cars Facebook page, join the Jeff Buys Cars Insider Group, and then you can find the link to um, the Jeff Hall, which is the Steve broadcast where you've got a choice of five cars, one of which is this. So you've got uh, two Volvo 850s now, a BMW X5. What are the other ones? Matt's Audi A four and my Renault 11 which you'd have to be mad to uh mad to pick transmission lights can come on if the engine power has been restricted somehow i.e by a faulty cat or lambda sensor okay so it would make sense that those two are on at the same time then um lambda sensor could be throwing the transmission out but as i said that it, it's working fine i've got all my gears and it's it's quite an impressively fast car for what it is actually 1300 quid i paid for this that's all um Transmission phobia. Did it all start when you woke up this morning? Yeah. Trans rights. I'm all for trans rights. I think I do think you should be able to choose if you want a manual or an auto. I am I'm 100 behind trans rights. We should have the right to choose. Um, well, I've got you. Here's something funny. This car obviously is from 1994, so it's exactly 30 years old. Uh, it's a March. Tim Hicks, you'd pitch pick the Renault. Thank you, Tim, because I'd love to get a shot of that car. Although someone's offered to swap me a Mark 1 Audi TT for my Renault 11. So if that goes ahead, that would be great. That would be a great car to get into. Um, right, funny story. I am... Um, what was that? Old fuel can knacker the Lambda Sensor if it hasn't been driven. I don't think it's been used much, actually, lately. It's been driven harder on the way back with me than I think it ever has. It's an odd car because it's a 1994, so it's, like, the very first of the um, T5s. The T5 came out in 1994, so this is... This is one of the very first. Um, and they do feel safe. It's got a slight knocking from the front right suspension, which I suspect is, um, it could be a snap spring, but it's more likely that it's going to be one of the the, um, the bushes on the wishbones because these Volvos do tend to eat those. Anyway, let me tell my funny story. This is a 1994 car. And because it's from 1994 when things were sensible, we have a manual handbrake. Is it blue or that ugly dark purple? This is red. Um, and a friend of mine who goes away for work has a 2012 Land Rover Discovery. And when he goes away, it, obviously it's an automatic and he has to put the electronic handbrake on, which instead of being progressive like a good old fashioned handbrake, it's just a button. So it's either on or off. The problem is when he goes away, that handbrake is fully clamped to the disc the whole time that he's away. So he got back yesterday, jumped in his car, having not driven it for six weeks. And obviously the rear left caliper has completely given up. And because it's a powerful car, the wheel was turning. But as we were driving along, you could just hear it grinding as the caliper and pads were, were clenching onto the disc. And I just thought, isn't that ridiculous? So I've always hated electronic handbrakes. But there you have a classic example. You can't just, you know, with this car, if I was leaving it for some time, I'd just leave it in park. I wouldn't put the handbrake on for risk of the rear brakes uh, binding up. But with a modern car with an electronic handbrake, you can't do that. You can't just leave it in park because you can't put it in park and not engage the handbrake, which is ridiculous. Always leave them in gear and chocked so brakes do not seize on. Thank you very much. It's just like the absolute basics of leaving a car parked up, isn't it? Um, just trying to wonder now if I've left the handbrake on, on my other Volvo 850 that's down in the field. But that doesn't matter. That can stay in the field for a while. Half leather, half cloth are the best seats for these. Way better than full leather. Thank you, Honourable Pigeon. You are correct. The half leather is actually the thinking man's choice when it comes to Volvo 850s. It's a very, very nice car indeed. Um, I hate the noise they make. What, what, the noise from electronic handbrakes? Just all modern stuff. It's just, just all the modern stuff on modern cars, all of the touchscreen, all of everything. And I was having this conversation with someone today and we were talking about cars and new cars. And I said to him, like, it's, it's, it's not about the money. I mean, don't get me wrong. I can afford to walk into a BMW dealership and sign up for a brand new 420 diesel on a pay monthly. 
But like, I wouldn't want to do that. It's not just about the money. I prefer the character and the feel and everything that I've got with an older car. I'm just, I'm much happier in cars between 1995 and 2005. That's what I want to stay with. Right, Lee says, long time watcher. Thought of you at 6.30 this morning when we had absolutely zero clouds in the sky and within an hour, complete cloud coverage. This can't be normal. Um, the weather today has been really, really odd. So right now we've actually got what I would call fairly normal skies. But over there, we've got like a grey firmament going on. Uh, but on the train earlier on, I, it genuinely looked like I was on my way to the apocalypse. Um, I've not seen skies like it, it, not for a long time anyway. It was absolutely nuts. Um, because this morning when I left Malvern, it was warm. I didn't bring my coat with me. I just I got, you know, this is quite a thick check shirt. I thought, oh, I'll be fine in that. By the time I got to Cardiff, I was freezing my balls off. I thought, what is going on with this weather? I don't want to moan about it because I just sound like an old man that moans about the weather all the time. But I think that's what happens when you get old. You do. You, you moan about the weather. Um, beautiful weather on the... Wait, which coast are you on? South. US on the south coast have beautiful leather. Leather? Weather. Bright, warm and spring-like. Ben had a storm complete with thunderstorms in Sully Hull. Um, yeah, <laughs> Carl, I want my 1.7 TD Vauxhall Cavalier back. That was a car that was just made out of pig iron, weren't they? Um, so that's pretty much it for this evening. I wanted to show you this car, uh, because I've got the, yeah, so this car will be given away in what's known as a Jeffel, uh, on Facebook page tonight at eight o'clock. And I needed a video for the people who are going to watch that because they obviously need to see this car and are interested in it. It doesn't come with much history, uh, or, or really any history at all, really, but it does come with, what is that? Ah, oh, it does come with a manual on how to replace the antenna, which is funny because the antenna is working. Uh, Volvo 8019, the book's from 1997, so I'd say that was a replacement because um, this is a 1994 car, but be interesting to see what, shall I have a look and see what the warning light says? Um, I love that it's got like variable temperatures for, for driver and passenger. Do you remember Golf, Volkswagen was shouting about that with their new Golf, like it was the biggest deal ever. Well, Volvo had been doing that for ages. Um, yeah, so I've got an electronically operating sunroof, which obviously I love. It doesn't have traction control and it doesn't have cruise control. So no traction control and no cruise control, but I do have heated windows, heated mirrors, trip computer, heated seats and a sunroof. So a bit of an odd spec, really. And I think it's, oh no, it's not, it's not wind up windows in the back. They are electric. But I, I mean, my estate car is a weird one because that's got heated seats and cruise control, but wind up windows in the back. So very odd, the Volvo specs. Um, Manual seats, obviously, I love manual seats because electric seats, there's just no need. The motors are heavy and they're just going to go wrong. Um, single airbag, just got an airbag on the driver's side, this one. But I figured, like, it's been a little while since Jeff Buys Cars has actually bought a car and put it on the YouTube channel, hasn't it? So it was definitely uh, about time that I went and did this. So as I say, I've got this one. Um, right, troubleshooting, let's have a look. I've got this one and I've got an estate that... Um, that Tony's going to go pick up for me, hopefully tomorrow. I'm excited about that as well. That's a manual gearbox car. Um, so, imbalance, vibration, or heavy steering during driving. Well, there's definitely a little bit of vibration at about 50 mile an hour, but it goes away when you go a lot faster. Uh, does that just says have the wheels rebalanced? But as I said, I've actually got um, I've got another set of wheels for this that have all been that have been refurbished. Uh, engine does not start, engine does not stop. No, just trying to find the fault finding for the... I, th I think whoever it was that said that is right. It's going to be down to the Lambda. I haven't checked the oil or anything. I've just jumped in it and driven it home. So, we've got all this all this to come. Uh, right, the other thing... Just, you don't want to watch me just reading through my manual, do you? Uh, what we are going to do with this car, though... Evening, Kevin. Is we're going to go see John Hamer. You know John Hamer, the author of um, The Falsification of History? We're going to go see him on Monday, and I'm going to make a video with him. So, uh, there you go, 15-minute live broadcast. I think that's pretty much everything for tonight. I hope you're having a good Friday. I hope you're having a good weekend. As I said, 
the video of collecting this car will be really good because John, who I had the car off, was lovely and he had some really good chat. And we just talked about, you know, the history of Wales and what's going on in industry. And he's just a really interesting fella. So that was going to be good. Ben says page 57 is his favourite. Uh, I'll stick my 740 and S60 new cars. I have no feeling with a load of cheap, complicated rubbish. Simon, I think you're absolutely spot on. Thank you very much, everybody. I'll see you. I might see you at eight o'clock over on Facebook for the live broadcast over there. Uh, and join the Jeff Buys Cars Insider group on Facebook to understand what's going on with all of that and catch up with you in a bit. Thank you very much. I am going to enjoy my drive home as the sun sets and uh, we'll see what she does. It's annoying that I can't put any of that on YouTube to incriminate myself. Yeah, can't, can't, can't speed and film. Um, so we won't do that anyway. Adelino has got a car proposal for you. Send it over, buddy. I think you've got my email address, jeffbuyscars at gmail.com. Always look forward to seeing your suggestions. Oh, Kenny's WhatsApping me. Um, right, everybody, thank you very much. I'll catch up with you probably over the weekend because, you know, if there's a quiet moment, then I'll do a YouTube live. I think my little lad's got karate on Saturday anyway, so I'll have to sit and hang around and wait for that. Uh, so that will probably be a good chance to go live. Right, catch you later on.